uh, we will start the reproductive system. The reproductive system is the only system in your body which is completely different in a male and in a female. All other systems you know are same. But this system is completely different. Now, reproductive system is the most interesting system of the body, right? Although it is not the most important system, you know, if I remove your reproductive system, you will still survive, right? We know that ovary, we remove uterus, right? Uh, we can remove testes, still the person will survive, you know? So, it is not very essential in that way. For individual survival, it is not essential, right? But just think this way, from now, if next 100 years or 150 years, no reproductive system works, then what will happen? The entire mankind will disappear, right? So in that way, it is a very important system, you can now think, right? The whole mankind will disappear. So, reproductive system is a very interesting system. It is also not essential for individual survival, but essential for the mankind. Now, reproductive system is the most diverse system. Very interesting. If you see the reproduction of many other creatures in nature, so many interesting stories, so many interesting, you know, things you will see. There are some creatures in their part of life, they are male and then they turn to female. Many, you know, agricultural, uh, in, if you see the uh, uh, plants like that. There are many creatures, they have both male and female reproductive systems inside the body. Both are existing in the same body. Make sense? So they produce sperm, they fertilize their own egg. So many, many interesting stories you will see um, about reproductive system or reproduction. Anyway, so since we are going to talk about the human reproductive system, we will talk about the male reproductive system and female reproductive system. Now, male reproductive system is more selfish than female reproductive system. You know, male reproductive system produces sperm, right? That fertilizes the ovum or egg. Female reproductive system produces ovum or egg, but it performs many other functions, right? Fertilization occurs inside female reproductive system. Embryo is formed, right? Embryo becomes a fetus inside the re female reproductive system, right? So, fertilization, maintaining the pregnancy, entire pregnancy, right? Um, are done by female, not male. Okay? So, since female reproductive system performs more function, female reproductive system is more complicated than the male reproductive system because it performs more functions. <clears throat> so, today we will talk about the male reproductive system. Uh, but before we start the male reproductive system, first we will talk about in general uh, the reproductive organs in both male and female. Then we will talk about the male reproductive system. 
So first we'll talk about the parts of reproductive system, both male and female. And then we'll talk about the production of sperm, spermatogenesis. Then we'll talk about the pathway of sperm. After the sperm is produced, then it gets out from the body. So through which structures it passes, we'll talk about that. That's the pathway, how it gets out from the body. Then we'll talk about the glands in male reproductive system. There are three types of glands in male reproductive system. We'll talk about that. Then we'll talk about the most important organ of male reproductive system. Those are testes. So we'll see the structure of a testis, then how sperm is produced inside the testis. We'll see that. Where the sperm are produced inside the testis, we'll see that. Then we'll talk about the scrotum. And scrotum houses the testis. But scrotum has another important function. It regulates the temperature inside the testis, which is very important for spermatogenesis. Production of sperm, you need adequate or perfect temperature. Then we will see the structure of a sperm. So first, Primary reproductive organs. Male primary reproductive organs are testes. There are two testes in male reproductive system. Those are the primary reproductive organs. In female, the primary reproductive organs are two ovaries. Testes produce sperm ovaries produce ovum or egg or oocyte same thing ovum egg oocyte that's why they are called as primary reproductive organs because sperm and ovum those are essential for new life right without a sperm no new life without ovum no new life. So those two components are essential. Now you know that other structures like your uterus or fallopian tube or other structures, those are not really essential. We know now you can do in vitro fertilization, right? Outside of the body. But you need what? You need a sperm and an ovum. So those are really very important. Other structures we can, you know, Without those, we can do fertilization outside of the body in a petri dish and produce embryo. That can be done. So, that's why testes and ovaries are the primary reproductive organs. Now, uh, primary Reproductive organs in male, testes in female, ovaries, and these are called gonads. So male gonads are testes, female gonads are ovaries. Make sense? Both are gonads. And testes produce sperm. Ovaries produce ovum, which is also called egg, or oocyte. Now, sperm and oocyte, these are called gametes. 
so gametes are sperm and oocyte male gametes are sperm female gametes are ovum or oocyte So gametes are sperm and ova. Okay. So we can say that gonads produce gametes. That's it. Gonads produce gametes. Also, gonads produce hormones. So gonads produce hormones and gametes. So, hormones are very important. What kind of hormones? Sex hormones. And sex hormones perform some important functions. Let me mention those. Sex hormones are needed for the growth and maturation. of gametes that is sperms and ova sex hormones are needed for the sexual behavior that is desire and drive okay the sex hormone controls those sexual behavior sex hormones are essential for secondary sex characteristics what are the secondary sex characteristics by looking at those features you can separate a male and a female very simple those are called secondary sex characteristics now if i ask you how you will separate a male from a female by looking the external features what do you think that of sample right one anything else facial hair right voice male voice is louder anything else broader shoulder more muscles skeletal muscles prominence of skeletal muscles right masculine body so those are the baldness those are male secondary sex characteristics female secondary sex characteristics are given by female sex hormones high pitch voice right you can hear from far although not very loud but you can uh, listen from far uh, fat subcutaneous fat under the skin female has more subcutaneous fat broader hip right female breasts so those are the female secondary sex characteristics given by female sex organs now how you know that the sex hormones are responsible for those secondary sex characteristics if i you know uh, if any girl takes testosterone male sex hormones every day then you will see the changes right so we know that those hormones are essential for the secondary sex characteristics so just repeating gametes are sperm and ova and gametes are essential for new life offspring <coughs> very important production of offspring or new life and hormones are needed for those few important functions okay uh, now accessory reproductive organs 
include ducts, glands and external genitalia. So those are accessory reproductive organs. <coughs> now we will start to talk about the male reproductive system. The primary organs are testes and accessory organs in male reproductive system external genitalia includes penis and scrotum those two organs or parts belong to male external genitalia penis and scrotum glands in male reproductive system there are three types of glands seminal vesicles prostate and bulbo urethral glands there are two seminal vesicles one prostate and two bulbo urethral glands so those are the glands we'll talk about those uh, more <coughs> so first we'll see the structure of the scrotum scrotum is a sac of skin and superficial fascia. So, skin is the outer layer and inside that you have a superficial fascia. Now, inside the superficial fascia, just remember, you have a thin layer of muscle. So, you can also write down skin, superficial fascia and inside the superficial fascia, you have a thin layer of muscle in the wall of the scrotum. That muscle is called dartos. Okay. So, <coughs> if you See the scrotum, it's a sac and it has the skin, the outer layer, then the superficial fascia and inside the superficial fascia, you have a thin layer of muscle, that is the tartus muscle. Okay, okay. now, scrotum houses the testes. So, there are two testes inside the scrotum and there is another muscle that hangs the testes from above and then covers the whole testes like this. So, this is another muscle. This muscle is called cremaster. Cremaster muscle. So you see, in the testes, you have two muscles in the wall, a thin layer of muscle that is called the dartus muscle and the muscle that is holding the testes from above, hanging the testes from above and then covers the testes, that is the premaster muscle. And just know that these two muscles are very important to regulate the temperature inside the scrotum. Why the temperature regulation inside the scrotum is very important because for spermatogenesis, production of sperm, you need to maintain that temperature. If the temperature is high or low, spermatogenesis will get slower. So, regulating the temperature inside the scrotum is very important. Now, how these muscles regulate the temperature. This is the body, so pelvic cavity, then abdomen, right? So this is the body and this is the scrotum. If the temperature outside of the body is low, that means cold weather, what will happen? The hemaster muscle will contract will get shorter and also dartus muscle will contract. So, when dartus muscle will contract, 
the scrotum will get smaller, will move towards the body, and when trimester muscle contracts, it pulls the testes upwards. So being closer to the body. So contraction of both muscles will move the testes towards the body. And in that way, inside the scrotum, the temperature will stay warm because you know that body is always warm, right? So if you move the test is close to the body, then it will get temperature from heat from the body, right? So that way, the temperature will be maintained. Now, if in your body, temperature increases, like you got fever, if the body temperature increases, then what will happen? These muscles will relax because otherwise, if the testes are close to the body, then testes will get hot. So, when these muscles will relax, the scrotum will move down, the testes will move down, okay, away from the body. So, in cold weather outside, we we'll move towards the body to get the heat from the body, and if the body temperature increases, we we'll go away from the body, okay. So, not get so that's how those muscles regulate the temperature inside the scrotum. Inside the scrotum, the temperature should be always 3 degree lower than the body temperature. Okay, so 3 degree lower than the body temperature. <coughs> that temperature is needed for spermatogenesis. Uh, here you see the scrotum, two testes, uh, and the inside the scrotum is separated by a septum, that is the middle septum of the scrotum. And in the left side, in this picture, you see uh, the trimester muscle coming from above and covering the whole testis. So you don't see the testis, you only see the muscle. Now, if you remove that muscle, then you'll see the testis. So in the right side, they have removed that muscle. So now you can see the testis, right? The white round egg shaped structure, that's the testis. Now, a cord comes uh, from above and that cord holds the testes uh, that is called the spermatic cord and spermatic cord is this whole structure this whole structure is that the whole structure that is coming from above is the spermatic cord remember the whole structure coming from above now inside the spermatic cord you have few structures what are those? One is cremaster muscle, you already know that. So inside the spermatic cord, you have that muscle, cremaster muscle, but you also have other structures. In the right side, you see that. If you remove the cremaster muscle, what are the other structures? You see testicular artery. Ductus difference. Ductus difference is a duct. That's why it is called ductus. Duct is a tube, right? So, Ductus defens, you have the autonomic nerve fibers. Okay, so those are the structures you have uh, inside the spermatic cord. Now, testicular artery gives blood circulation or supply to the testes, which is very important. Nerve supply is given by autonomic nerve fibers. Now, what's the function of that tube? Ductus difference. Ductus difference take the sperm out from the testis. You know that sperm are produced inside the testis and from the testis the sperm is taken out by the ductus difference. Also called vas difference. Same thing, okay? Ductus difference or vas difference. So those are the structures inside the spermatic cord, trimester muscle, 
ductus stiffens or vas stiffens and you know their functions now and also have the blood vessels and nerves, nerve fibers. <coughs> Production of sperm is called spermatogenesis. Genesis is production, you know that. And we know that sperm are produced inside the testis, but where inside the testis? This is a testis, and if you see inside the testis, there are many segments inside the testis separated by membranes those are called septa so these are septa and septa separate inside part of testis into many lobes so Inside the testis, you have many septa, they separate the testis into many lobules, small, so low lobules and lobules. Now, inside the lobule, you have coiled tubes like this. This coiled tubes or tube like structures are called seminitreras tubules. So inside the inside the lobule, lobules are separated by septa and inside the lobules you have the coiled tube like structures, those are called the seminiferous tubules. Now the sperm is formed in the wall of these seminiferous tubules. Now, if I just take one seminiferous tubule, so this is the tubule, and make a cross section. If I just cut it and see the tubule, this is the seminiferous tubule, it's cross section, slice. And now this is the wall of the tubule and this is the lumen of the seminiferous tubule. Sperm are produced in the wall of the seminiferous tubule. So sperm are produced in the wall of the seminiferous tubule. Those tubules are inside the lobules of the testis. Now, if you see the outer part of the wall, there are many stem cells. These stem cells are called spermatogonia. So, stem cells are also called spermatogonia. Gonia. Gonium is single one, gonia plural. So stem cells are along the outer part of the wall of the seminiferous tubule. And from these stem cells by mitosis new cells are produced. By mitosis, <coughs> new cells are produced. And then these cells start to move towards the lumen, towards the lumen. And as they move towards the lumen, they go through a number of stages of maturation. So these new cells start to move towards the lumen and get more and more mature and when they come very close to the lumen they become 
elongated like this. So head part and then you see tail. So it looks like a baby fish. So this is the sperm and then eventually it gets detached from the wall and enters into the lumen. Okay. So they enter into the lumen. So these are the mature sperm. Now, again, I am repeating along the outer part of the wall of the seminifera stable, you have the stem cells and those stem cells produce new cells by mitosis and these are the new sperm and they start to immature sperm. They start to move towards the lumen and get mature. They go through a number of stages of maturation. So, we will uh, see uh, what are those stages of maturation. Okay. Uh, now, another thing in between the seminifera tubules. So, these are the seminifera tubules uh, and in between the seminiferous tubules, you have another type of cells. These cells are called interstitial cells of lady. And these interstitial cells of lady produce sex hormone, male sex hormone, uh, androgen that becomes testosterone. Okay? So, androgen is the precursor of testosterone. So, these cells produce androgens and that become testosterone. Okay. Now, <coughs> the testis has two coverings. The coverings are also called tunics. What are those tunics? Tunica vaginalis and tunica albuginia. So, those are two coverings of the testes. We will see that. Uh, and as I have mentioned, septa divide the testes into how many lobules? 250 to 300 lobules. So inside the testes, you have 250 to 300 lobules that are separated by septa. Okay? And inside each lobule, you have 1 to 4 coiled seminifera tubules. So, not fixed number 1 to 4 seminifera tubules. And we already know that in the wall of those seminifera tubules, spermatogenesis, this form is produced. Okay? This is uh, receive blood from testicular arteries. So, testicular arteries, you have seen that inside the spermatic cord, you remember testicular arteries, they enter into the testis and testicular veins take the deoxygenated blood out. <coughs> Here, um, you can see uh, the layers, outer layers or coverings of the testis. So, tunica vaginalis, is the outer one and tunica albuginia is the inner one. And then you see if you cut the testis, you will see the lobules separated by septa and inside the lobule the seminifera tubules. Now, after the sperm enters into the lumen of the seminifera tubule, they start to get out, move out outside from the testis. So, we will see how they get out. So, from the seminifera tubule, sperm gets out through straight tubules. Very short, but straight, not coiled. So, here you see the straight tubules. Very short, but straight. And then enter into a network of tubes that is called reti testis that network you see and from the reti testis 
the sperm enter into the head of epididymis. Epididymis is a C-shaped structure that is attached to the testis. So if this is the testis, so this is the testis and epididymis is a C-shaped structure attached to the testis. And from the testis, first from the red testis, that network, the sperm enter into the head part of the epididymis, then body and then through the tail, it gets out. So this is the head of epididymis, body of epididymis and tail of epididymis. So first enter into the head and stay there for several hours and then start to get out. Now, from the tail part, the tube that takes the sperm out, that is the ductus deferens or thus deferens. So, that's the tube here, you see, ductus deferens or thus deferens. So, this is the head of epididymis, body, tail and then ductus deferens. Okay? And the ductus deferens or thus deferens enter into the spermatic cord and move towards the pelvic cavity through the spermatic cord. Okay? So, sperm gets out that way. <clears throat> so, here you see the pathway of sperm, seminiferous tubule, um, straight tubule, rectus means straight. So, these are also called tubulus rectus. You know rectus means straight, right? Do you remember? Rectus abdomen is muscle, rectus means straight. So, straight tubule or tubulus rectus. Then that network, reti testis, then different ductal, epididymis, head, body, tail, then ductus difference. Then from the ductus difference, sperm enter into the ejaculatory duct and then through the urethra, it gets out from the body. So, you have seen ductus difference, but you uh, didn't see ejaculatory duct, so we will see that here. So, now you see inside the pelvic cavity, what happens? The ductus difference through the spermatic cord enter into the pelvic cavity and then uh, run over the urinary bladder. You see the urinary bladder, that red structure organ. And then the end of ductus difference or vas difference get wider, the end part gets wider and that is called the ampulla of ductus difference. You know ampulla is the expanded tube or dilated tube is called ampulla. So the end of ductus difference gets wider or expanded or dilated that is called the ampulla of ductus difference and then from there the sperm enter into the ejaculatory duct here. So, this is the end of ductus defense expanded, that's the ampulla, and then into the ejaculatory duct, then into the urethra. So, from the ejaculatory duct, it goes into the urethra, and through the urethra, gets out from the body. So, that's the entire pathway of sperm, where it is produced, how it gets out from the testis, enter into the ductus defense and vas defense and then ejaculatory duct and the urethra. Okay? Uh, histology of the seminiferous tubule. The same thing I showed you here. So, if you make a cross section of seminiferous tubule, and see under the microscope, you will see the wall and the lumen and in the wall, you will see the sperm of different stages of maturation. Those are closer to the outer surface, those are less mature, those are close to the lumen, those are more mature. And 
So this is just one seminiferous tubule. This is the wall. This is different cells, different stages of maturation, and this is the lumen. This is another seminiferous tubule. And in between, you have interstitial cells of leading that I showed you here. So those cells produce sex hormone androgens. Penis uh, is a part of male external genitalia. Two organs, penis and the scrotum, belong to external genitalia. So, <coughs> penis has a root and a shaft and the end part is called glans penis. So, root, shaft and glans penis. Inside the root, you will find couple of structures, those are called crura. Crura is plural, cross is singular. So let's see the parts. So root in the left side, you see in the picture, root, shaft and the end part is called the glance pits. So if I ask you how many parts, just mention those are the three parts. Root is the first part, shaft is the middle, long part and end part is the glance pins. Now, inside the root, you see cross of pins. Plura is plural, since there are two, one in each side. Uh, so, plura of cross. <coughs> and also, in the root, you have ball of penis. That part is kind of expanded, round, expanded like a ball. So, uh, crura and ball. Then, inside the shaft, you have two structures inside the shaft. And so my new phone, I don't know how to how it will side, right? I believe. Okay, my older one has the now here. Okay. So inside the shaft you have two types of structures, corpora cavernosa and corpora. Sponsiosum. So, cavernosa or cavernosa and spongiosum. Spongiosum is only one and cavernosa two. That's why it is called cavernosa. Sum is one. Okay. So, Corpora spongiosum and corpora cavernosa. Now, those are the structures inside the shaft of the penis. Corpora cavernosa has many sinuses inside. So, inside the cavernosa, there are a lot of spaces or sinuses and Inside those sinuses or spaces, blood accumulates. And when blood accumulates inside the corpora cavernosa, inside the sinuses of corpora cavernosa, what happens? The enlargement of penis and hardening of penis occur. So, blood is actually doing that. Now, inside the cavernosa, these two are cavernosa in both sides. And this middle one is the spongiosum. And through the spongiosum, the urethra passes. So if I make a cross section, it will look like this. This is the shaft to cavernosa in both sides. Uh, we have cavernosa. In the middle, 
you have the spongiosum and inside the spongiosum you have the urethra so this is spongiosum copper spongiosum and these two are cavernosa This is also cavernous. Now, inside the cavernous, as I have mentioned, you have a lot of spaces. Those are called sinuses. And blood gets into those sinuses, accumulate there to enlarge the penis and make it hard. And when blood gets out, then it gets smaller again. And sponsor some actually supports the urethra because through the spongiosum urethra passes okay now <coughs> we'll see the glands penis the copper spongiosum enter into the glands penis and fills the glands penis so inside the glass penis, you will find what? Proper spongiosum, the middle one that goes inside the glass penis and fills the glass penis. Okay. Uh, so since blood enters into the cavernosa, inside the cavernosa, you have the arteries. So, inside the cavernosa, you see tiny red structures, those are the arteries, and inside the spongiosum, you have the urethra. Okay, so these are the arteries, blood vessels, and this is the urethra. Okay. <coughs> the function of crua or crass is attaching the penis to the body wall. So the crura uh, attach the penis to the body wall. Vasectomy, probably you, all of you have heard, right? That procedure, vasectomy. So very simple procedure. Dissecting the ductus difference or vas difference. That's why vasectomy. Cutting off the vas difference or ductus difference, the tube that takes the sperm from the epididymis to the ejaculatory duct. You remember that. Uh, it passes through the spermatic cord. Now, this is a very simple procedure. Like, you know, if I ask you to lie down here, <laughs> You see, we have the scissors over there. Uh, any of you can do it. Just need safety precaution. That's all. Uh, the reason is that ductus difference or vas difference in this area, um, inside the scrotum too, it is easy to get. You can just cut the skin superficial water, then uh, we have the process there, right? Dog process. So you can take it out like this and Get the scissors or scalpel and cut it like this. That's all. You can walk out. <laughs> and that's uh, simple. Uh, but uh, uh, unfortunately, uh, you know, in many parts of the world, boys are dominating, so they don't want to do that. They want the girls to do, and it's bigger operation, you know, surgery for the girls. If you want to do ligation. So, anyway, uh, so that's the vasectomy. You cut the ductus difference or vas difference like this, cut it. And better, you can leave it like that so a sperm will not get out from the body. Sperm will not get out from the body if you cut here. Uh, or you can quarter it, fuse the uh, opening or tie it, tie it or cutter it, that will be more safe. Okay. 
so it is 100% uh, effective way of what control uh, urethra urethra male urethra and female urethra are different male urethra is longer about 15 to 20 centimeter female urethra is 3 to 5 centimeter much shorter not only that male urethra is a passes for both sperm and urine female urethra is only for urine male urethra has three parts the part inside the prostate is prostatic urethra then the part inside the urogenital diaphragm there is a diaphragm here there are two diaphragms inside the body one is here you know that helps in breathing right the big one there is a small one here in the pelvic cavity and inside that urogenital diaphragm you have the shortest part of the urethra that's the membranous urethra and then inside the penis the longest part that's the spongy or penile urethra so those are the three parts of the urethra you have to go no okay so those are three parts now let's see those three parts this is the prostate under the urinary bladder this is the bladder and prostate is inferior to the urinary bladder inferior to the urinary bladder inside the prostate that part is the prostatic urethra then this is the urogenital diaphragm that thin muscle so inside that this is the membranous urethra and inside the penis that's the penile or spongy urethra glands in male reproductive system as i have mentioned there are three types of glands two seminal vesicles, one prostate, and two bulbourethral glands. Seminal vesicles produce 70% volume of semen. So, semen mostly come from the seminal vesicles. Semen is the fluid. And then uh, the Seminal fluid is slightly alkaline in nature. So, in nature, seminal fluid is alkaline, viscous, thick. And then, prostate. Prostate produces slightly acidic fluid. Okay? So, opposite. And this secretion is milky secretion, milky fluid. And prostatic fluid or secretion is important because it activates partially, not fully, partially activates the sperm. And <coughs> then the bulbourethral glands, those are very tiny P shaped glands located inside the urogenital diaphragm. So, if you see the urogenital diaphragm, let's go back to previous slide. You see urogenital diaphragm, and in, in, inside the urogenital diaphragm, in both sides of the membranous urethra, you have tiny glands, those are the bulbourethral glands. So, from those glands, mucus, slippery secretion, enter into the urethra to make the urethral wall slippery. That prevents the friction, which is very important. The urethral wall is very sensitive, so that uh, mucus secretion uh, will make the wall slippery and covers the wall like a thin layer. Okay, so those are the glands in male reproductive system. Spermatogenesis. 
you must remember that sperm are produced in the wall of the seminiferous tubule. We have talked about this, right? And you have the stem cells here, spermatogonium, and by mitosis, spermatogonia produce new cells by mitosis just to increase the number to produce many sperm and then uh, what happens you see here this picture uh, so spermatogonium you see the top here spermatogonium those are the stem cells right then by mitosis these cells produce new cells. One thing uh, you remember, both mitosis and meiosis take place during spermatogenesis and oogenesis. So during the production of sperm as well as during the production of ova, both mitosis and meiosis type cell division occur. In all other body cells, only mitosis. In all other body cells, only what? mitosis. But during sex cell production, sperm and ova, first mitosis and then meiosis. That means both are needed for spermatogenesis. Make sense? As well as oogenesis. So first, mitosis will multiply, produce new cells and then the cells go through a number of stages that I mentioned before. So we will see what are those stages of maturation or spermatogenesis. First, <coughs> from the daughter cells after mitosis, primary spermatocytes are formed. Then primary spermatocytes become more mature and now they are called the secondary spermatocytes. And then secondary spermatocytes become early spermatid. And then the shape of the sperm changes. Shape of that growing sperm changes. And they become elongated, long. And that stage is called late spermatids. So when the cells go from early to late spermatid stage, the shape changes significantly. They become long. And then the late spermatids become the mature sperm. Those are called spermatozoa. So spermatozoa are a mature sperm. And the stem cells are spermatogonium. Don't confuse between these two spermatogonium all the way top. Those are the stem cells. And the spermatozoa are the most mature sperm. So now, um, as I told you, both mitosis and meiosis take place during spermatogenesis as well as oogenesis, ovum production. So why? First, the stem cells divide by mitosis to produce new cells. So mitosis is to increase the number by producing new cells. To produce new cells to increase the number of sperm. Meiosis is not to produce new cells, increase the number. Meiosis is to reduce the chromosomes. Reduce the number of chromosomes to half. To reduce the number of chromosomes to half. Now, why meiosis is needed for spermatogenesis and oogenesis? Any idea? 
to reduce the number of chromosomes, right? Why you need to reduce the number of chromosomes? To have. Yes. So, sperm has half number of chromosomes, ovum has half chromosomes, right? So, when the sperm will fertilize the ovum, they will get together. So, half from each parent. Make sense? 23 from father, 23 years from mother. And that's the first cell of life, fertilized egg, right? And half chromosomes are coming from each parent. Make sense? That's why meiosis is only needed for the production of sperm and ovum. Make sense? Other body cells, you don't need to reduce the number of chromosomes. They will stay same. So mitosis, increase the number of cells, but keep the chromosomes same. Meiosis reduce, reduces the chromosomes to half. So if I ask you, tell me few differences between mitosis and meiosis. This is the stem cell, just 46 pairs of chromosomes, and mitosis. Reverse the cell and produces two daughter cells from one mother cell. But keep the chromosome number same. Okay. Meiosis does what? Meiosis has two steps. Meiosis one. And meiosis two. Okay, so you see in the left side meiosis one. In meiosis one, the chromosomes will be reduced to half, so forty-six to twenty-three. So meiosis one. It reduces the number of chromosomes to half. Then meiosis 2, you see there, in the left side, meiosis 2 divides the cells, but will keep the chromosome numbers same. Okay? So, these are sperm. So, after meiosis, the new sperm have haploid number of chromosomes or half number of chromosomes. Okay? So both mitosis and meiosis take place during spermatogenesis. Okay, now if I write down here the differences between mitosis and Meiosis, mitosis, produces two daughter cells. Okay? But when meiosis, both steps are completed, meiosis 1 and 2, from 1 we get 4 daughter cells. Right? when both steps of meiosis are completed. Mitosis keeps chromosome number same. But meiosis reduces chromosomes Half, which is very important. Right? So each parent can contribute. <coughs> Mitosis, you can say, is completed in one step. There are five sub steps, but <coughs> only one. Meiosis has meiosis one and two. Okay. 
So those are few differences uh, between the mitosis and meiosis. Now you know why uh, both are needed for spermatogenesis. <coughs> okay, now let's go to the next one. Uh, same thing, here you see the wall of seminiferous tubule and you see the mature sperm, those are spermatozoa. They got detached from the wall and they started to move. Now, mature sperm has three parts, head, midpiece and a tail. So this is the head part and the head part has a cap. This is interesting. <laughs> the head of the sperm has a cap and uh, the cap is called acrosome or acrosomal cap it's like a crown on the head and so this is the head part okay and the head part contains the nucleus so inside the head uh, you have the nucleus and inside the nucleus you have the chromosomes DNA you know that. So that's why since the head part has the nucleus and DNA, this part is called the genetic region. Genetic region has chromosomes and DNA, the genes. Then you have the mid piece. The mid piece is the middle portion and inside the mid piece, you have many mitochondria. So, mitochondria line up like this inside the mid piece. So, that's why this part is called metabolic part or metabolic region. Uh, you know, all of you, that mitochondria are known as what? Powerhouses, right? Metabolism mostly occurs inside the mitochondria to produce ATP. Okay, so that's why those are called the powerhouses. They produce ATP by metabolism. So that's why this is the metabolic region. And the tail part is flagella, moves like this and helps the sperm to move. You know that a sperm needs to move, right? To get out need to swim in the semen, in the fluid. So that's why sperm has a tail and that tail beats like wheat. You know wheat? <laughs> so uh, the tail beats like wheat and moves the sperm. <coughs> now, uh, inside the acrosome, you have fluid. That fluid contains digestive-like enzyme. So, why acrosome cap is there? This is the egg or ovum, and you know that sperm get attached to the egg like this. Many sperm get attached to the surface of the egg and from the acrosome, the cap, the enzyme is secreted here and that digestive enzyme uh, destroys the wall of the egg and helps the sperm to penetrate, break the wall, secrete and that digest the wall, breaks the wall, so the sperm can penetrate. And they start to, all of them start to move inwards. It's like a race, you know, like if you have 100 meter race, uh, like uh, 100 people, they have started running. Now, if you see, 
that someone has already, you have only one prize, only one prize, and you see someone has already reached, right? You are behind. Then what you will do? You will say, oh, no, no, you know, need to run anymore because only one prize. So same thing happens here. All sperm are digging, trying to go inside, okay? And when one sperm goes all the way in, then others stop and die. Okay? They die in the wall of the egg. So, which is very important. Otherwise, many sperm will fertilize one egg. Right? So that will be a problem, big problem. Only one sperm should fertilize one egg. So, 23, 23 chromosomes. Remember that? So, if two goes in at the same time, then the chromosome number will be Triply, right? 323. So that's not good. So uh, now that's why you have that cap that secretes the digestive enzyme. That is called hyaluronidase. Hyaluronidase is the name of that secretion. <coughs> okay. Now, uh, male infertility. Male infertility um, occurs, you know that. Uh, one main reason for that is abnormal spar. If the male reproductive system produces abnormal spar, that is one main cause of male infertility. How the sperm could be abnormal? Sometimes, if you see the sperm under the microscope, uh, the abnormal sperm would have two tails instead of one tail would have two tails. So this is one condition. Another is one tail but two heads, double heads. Sometimes we see the head and tail of many sperm are separated, split, they are not attached, get detached. So if someone has infertility, you can examine the sperm under the microscope, right, to see if the sperm are healthy or abnormal sperm. So if you see this, this is uh, one reason of main, main infertility. Another is the sperm are not but, uh, normal, but the count is very low. If the count is very low, that could be another uh, possibility of male infertility. So. Okay. Stop. Enough. Okay. It's one hour, thirteen minute, fifty four seconds. So that's good timing.